district judge Jean Boyd or Jean Boyd uh, decided that she is not going to sentence 16 year old Ethan Couch to any jail time. Now this was a 16 year old boy who took seven of his friends on a joyride while he was absolutely drunk and then he crashed into people that were on the side of the road trying to deal with a car that was not working. Um, while he crashed into them he killed all four of them and two of the passengers in his car were so severe injured that one of them had internal injuries and several broken bones and the other one was so paralyzed that now the only way he can communicate is through blinking his eye now he comes from a wealthy family so the part of the defense was hey you know what since he comes from a wealthy family and since he's never really been disciplined appropriately uh, he has something known as affluenza he cannot expect certain consequences for his actions therefore we shouldn't give him any jail time well uh, the prosecutors in this case decided to pursue him n not only on the manslaughter charges but also on the charges including the two uh, friends that were severely injured from the crash and it turns out that the judge decided no still not giving him any jail time he will get 10 years of probation and he will spend some time in rehabilitation however there is no minimum amount of time that he is expected to spend there which means if it's a month-long re rehabilitation program he can get out of there in a month um, and his parents will be paying for it now they have not disclosed which program he's going to go to but previously his family offered to pay four hundred fifty thousand dollars to send him to one program in newport beach california it's nice there why, why not just buy another kid right you got a half a million it's for around let's get another to get a kid who's not a, a fuck up like right. this kid start over you know, I don't, I'm not too familiar with the story. Do you know if that kid, did he have a prior record? Was this his first offense? Do we know this stuff about this kid? I think it was his first it's offense. His, it was his first offense. Okay. Um, but I should also note, uh, he stole alcohol from a convenience store. Um, and he also f had Valium in his uh, blood system. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they tested him, they found that he was uh, very intoxicated. His blood alcohol level was three times the legal limit. Keep in mind, he's a teenager. He's 16 years old. Stole alcohol, drove under the influence, had all these passengers in his car, two killed. of which were severely injured. He killed four people, and he will serve no jail time whatsoever. And look, if you want to have a conversation about the fact that he's a teenager and it doesn't make sense to send him behind bars, uh, because you should focus on rehabilitating him? Okay, but the fact that affluenza was used as a defense, and I should note that the judge said that that had absolutely no impact on her decision. A, a defense witness apparently used that term. Mm -hmm. That was the term, the first time it was used. It was by a defense witness. The lawyer, his lawyer, has since said, it's crazy, this case has been horribly misrepresented. It's oh, not, really? This is not how it went down. But the prosecutors are like, it was your witness who used that term. So, oh, Okay. So, and, so and the, the, judge said, the judge said that that term and that part of the defense had no bearing on her decision to uh, avoid prison time or jail time for him. And he's a 16-year-old, so he would have been sent to a juvenile facility. If it was his first offense and he was 16, I get, you know, yeah, it, 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 he did kill four people. I, I, I know, but it's, it's still, he is 16, he is a juvenile. It wasn't intentional. The worst you could get, right, is is the involuntary manslaughter, right? Yeah, and plus the other kids you maimed. So you could be looking at six counts of that. I mean, you, yeah. could, you could be doing some, assuming he, leaving he out the 16 part. And of course, they could try to try him as an adult. They yeah. do that all the time, especially in Texas. Uh, I so, never am in favor of that at so any point say, ever, no matter what. Right. If you have a law that says you can't try people. I agree. If you're 16, you're 16. You're 16, you're 16. So yeah. if, you're, if you're a kid, and, and 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 you get caught. Let's say let's say he wasn't drunk and mm -hmm. he just was sleepy, and he crashed into people on the side of the road and killed four people and paralyzed a guy. Should he go to jail for that? No, right? I don't think so, right? It's a car crash. Car, just so a regular a car crash. Bad, just I bad, know. Just dri I just know. bad driving. Okay, yeah. but that's. I mean, look. If he's driving recklessly, then maybe you can have an argument that this is this is involuntary manslaughter. Mm -hmm. But in this particular case, I mean, he's got to take some responsibility for his actions. They're they're not really giving him any consequences at all like 10 years probation what does that mean someone's going to check right. in on him yeah. that doesn't mean anything and there's no minimum amount of, amount of time that he's expected to spend in rehabilitation and his family gets to decide where they take him and w how much they spend on it like that i have a problem with that as well i think we're all taken by the affluenza line yeah which, yeah like that's the thing like 10 years probation that's pretty serious if he gets drunk and they Again. find him drunk he'll go to prison for 10 years. Right. So if, well, I, mm -hmm. if the judge says so. If the judge says so. I mean, that's the idea of probation, is that you're on probation. You violate the probation, you mm -hmm. fulfill the sentence. 
So, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's a bad case. It's an ugly case. Yes. That term, affluenza, is crazy. Yes. There's nobody in the world who thinks that's right. I tend to, to some extent, agree with Jimmy. That, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'd put, you know, what do you want to do? I drove drunk as a teenager. I drove drunk as a teenager. Well, that was a stupid idea. It was and, stupid. And you could have killed someone. Yes, but I'm saying, like... And if you did kill someone, I guarantee you that you would have served some time behind bars, especially considering the fact that your family wasn't wealthy. Oh, I probably so, would have did time. Yeah. Fucking send this kid to jail. <laughs> You're right, I would have did time. I'm just saying, like, you can't have that double standard. The double standard is what people need yes. to deal with. It, it's, it goes way beyond this particular specific case. Okay. You know, it go. It, it it's more about our justice system and the way we treat people from certain socioeconomic statuses. Okay. Now, I, it's it, you know, if it was his second offense or if he had a hit, then then you go, yeah, okay, we have to send a message. He's already been warned. But I think you know the fact that he ended up killing people accidentally because he was drunk. I mean, a lot of people drive drunk. You know what I just thought about? I, when I was uh, fourteen, I like that was when I had like my first boyfriend. Really, really bad guy to be dating, right? He was a troublemaker. Latin guy? He was Latin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, and there was this one morning where he decided he wanted to take his older brother's car on a joyride. Like he didn't have, he was, he was 16 at the time, didn't have a license. So he was driving around our neighborhood early in the morning and a cop noticed that he looked extremely young and wanted to pull him over. Um, and he did not pull over. He decided mm -hmm. to like, what? yeah, so he's, I know, He's I know. 16, he's panicked. So, so he started driving around, right, uh, trying to get away from the cop, and then finally the cop stopped him. And uh, he, got, he was sent to a, a juvenile detention center for six months. Really? Yeah. And like he, what? he didn't hit any cars, didn't hurt any pedestrians, six months. And he came, look, we were from a working class neighborhood. Um, and he, That's he didn't, extreme. It, it is doesn't extreme. seem a little extreme. No, but, but again, the reason why I'm pointing to that is because, again, there's that double standard. Right. You don't have the money to afford this right. great defense. You're going to get sent to some sort of facility, right? Yeah. But if, you, if you're wealthy, you, know, you have affluenza. Yes. You, you know, you it's, can, it's also, it depends on the judge. You know, we don't know. The fact mm -hmm. is, Judge Jean Boyd, if she'd been with your boyfriend, might have given him... My, my ex-boyfriend. My, your ex-boyfriend, <laughs> right, sure. Might have <laughs> given him a pass, you know. Uh, that said, you know, yeah. you, you, look, there have to be consequences for actions this severe. You know, you killed four people when you maimed two. Definitely. And, and so, you know, whatever it is, I, the, you can't send him, there's no adult time in my world. But, you know, until he's 18, you go to juvenile hall at the bare minimum, then you, and then 10 years probation. You know, the, the families of the dead people, I'm sure, won't think that's enough, but that's probably all you can do. I don't know whether you can keep kids in juvenile until they're 21. Mm. Having 18, 19, 20, and 21 year olds in juvenile hall seems like a catastrophe yes. for the 13 year olds in juvenile Certainly. hall. So yeah. I would yeah. say no to that.